Okay, we're back. Right now, we're looking at one of the flipper assemblies. See, here's your coil, your plunger that gets basically sucked into the coil with a coil makes a magnet, sucks it in. Here's the, the linkage connecting your, your cam to the to the plunger, so basically it pulls in, and this is as it turns, it's flipping your uh, your flipper up. When it comes to the end, this isn't adjusted right. There we go. I'll have to adjust that before we're done. But as it pulls in, when it's right about at the end, I don't know if the camera shows this or not. Let's see if I can't zoom in more. Nope. It opens up. This is your end to stroke switch. What that does is that opens up. And there's actually two coils in here. One's got uh, low resistance. That's for your power to shoot the thing up. Shoot your uh, ball up the play field. And the other half is a high resistance, which is there that so you can you can hold the flipper on without uh, burning up your coil. So you, with the the secondary coil in there, you can you can hold that button all day. It's not going to really affect anything. But anyway, all we're doing we're not changing out this whole thing. We're not doing anything on this, but changing out the flipper bat. So get yourself in most cases an Allen wrench. Sometimes they're just little square head bolts. Take this. You got two set screws in here. I'm just going to loosen it up. Loosen one. Little turn. Get the other one. Loosen that up. If you're not sure, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Same application here. Okay. So I'm going to reach on the other side of my play field. This is that flipper shaft. And pull that out. See how this cam just flops. There's the one. This is actually the decent one. So we're going to set that aside. We're going to save that if we need something in a pinch in the future. I'm looking at my my bushing here. Let me pull this out of the way. This plastic bushing, these wear out the and the um, the flipper can flop around and if it's low enough it'll actually gouge up your play field over time. This one isn't cracked or anything. No pieces fell off the other side. So we're gonna take this flipper back. There's a new one. We're just going to pop that through. Same, same hole in the bushing. Okay, we're going to set this cam on here. Okay, it's just that easy, folks. Okay, and I'm just going to barely, barely snug this because I'm going to go on the other side and I'm going to set the bat where I want it. Okay, so I've got the convenience here of this handy dandy rotisserie. I can flip this thing back around so you guys can see. It doesn't show you much unless I move you back. 
Okay. So this is a 1976, and it, it's technically in the in the electromechanical world, an EM world. It's a newer game. I know it's 45 years old. It's not necessarily new, but it's newer than some of the setups. Well, they have these. I I call them uh, fun stops here because once the ball comes in the uh, out lane, if these weren't here, you might have a better chance of nudging the ball back up into play. A little death save, if you will. But with this rail here, it kind of prevents it. So, remember we left that this uh, screw just a little bit loose. We're not going to butt it up against the uh, the rail there, but you can see where this one sits. It's going to be just off of it, maybe a, an eighth inch or so. But that's the general angle you should be at. And you try and make them as equal as possible, and we'll get them get them all set up. We'll set this one where we want it. When we replace this guy, we're going to do the same. We'll just match it up. So I set it where I want it. I'm reaching under my play field here and tightening up that the set screws. Okay. King Kong force on this here. You just just snug it nice. Finger force. Don't fist it. Okay. It's fine. It's not hitting the plastic. It's allowing full travel. While we're here, we're going to change out this other side. Just so you can... See, I'm going to leave the um, play field the way it is. I'll just pull it out this way, but it's a, just a repeat. That's all. This one. This goes way slower when you're filming things. And now I've got lights and tripods and stuff in the way it doesn't doesn't really help but I want to help you come on okay got that loose again slip that out oops sometimes they get little burrs from these set screws they don't want to slide all that nice. Okay, I'm checking out the bushing on this one. It's not broke either. Let's see how the... Uh, I don't know if the camera's going to show that or not. Move some light here. Can you see that little... Let me figure out how to focus this. Mm -hmm. See the little gouge in there? That is from the set screw. And the shaft is actually a little bit worn. But see, this is a different type of design. This has a, a metal, flat piece of metal there. And then it's actually screwed to the plastic. We don't need that with the new style. New style is this, what I just showed you, the reinforced plastic. 
with the shaft press fit and glued in. So let's go ahead and pop this one through. Now in reality I could replace the bushings, I could do a whole flipper rebuild, everything else where you're replacing the coils and coil stops, your switches, but this thing pretty much worked as is when I got it. So I'm not too concerned. Obviously I'll replace trouble spots or things that are worn, but in this case I think it's going to be just fine. Tightening up my uh, my cam or my pawl. If you're to order, it's called a uh, a flipper pawl. P A W L. Tighten that just a little bit. Let me see where it sits. From this angle, it's it's pretty equal to the other one. Well, uh, we'll make sure it's where I want it when we're playing it. So for now, tighten up the other set screw. like that. Obviously when we put the rubbers back on these will get brand new shiny rubbers and that's that. So now all right we just put the flipper bat back on we flip the rotisserie back over because what we want to do in order to finish this all up, at least for purposes of what we're doing, is make sure that your end of stroke switch, this guy, has adjusted. This is just a little paper, piece of paper leaf, actual switch itself is under there. Can't wait to get some better lighting and better camera, but this is just the beginning, so we'll get there. But I'm not judging by this piece of paper. This is just acting like an insulator. And between here, let me take you off the tripod, see if I can show you. Let's see. doesn't have true autofocus where it stays focused. You got to keep pressing the button in this particular camera. But right here, this switch, if I pick this up, you'll see it basically splits apart. It's hard to tell with this piece of paper, but as this cam comes around, you want to make sure that it's set almost to the end of the stroke. You don't want to lose power halfway through. We're going to adjust it a little bit. But as long as it's coming apart, that's a good thing. You won't burn up your coil. But you don't want it opening up down here. It's not bad. But we're going to take it back just a little bit. And this is wide open, so I can actually use my fingers on that. So, see how it's right about to the end? This, this is just a piece of paper that's moving right there. When it actually hits this metal tab, the leaf, that's when it's opening the switch. So, right about there, I got a nice gap as it, uh, as my plunger's pulled in. So now, I'm sure I won't burn up my coil. 